tell them we're underway and ask them if they're taking on water. From the initial call when they said that the people were hurt pretty bad, we didn't know exactly to what extent. All right, let's get them off. Let's start pulling them on our boat. Disappointment. This is a sun secret. We have her on the ground, and I have a couple of injuries. Did you guys hear what it was? Uh, yeah, they ran aground at Dayboard 6. BM1 Todd Gormley from Station Cape Disappointment. Got a call this morning that a 36 foot wreck vessel had run aground in the Awako Channel. We were initially going to jump on the 47, so the 47 was fired up and ready to go. And we made the call to switch over to the 25 to get there a little bit quicker. Call the Cape, tell them we're underway. Day 10, ask them if they're taking on water. I'm Seaman Brett Weideman, stationed at Coast Guard Station Cape Disappointment. We definitely uh, have a lot of places where boats can get in trouble. They can run aground. When these boats head out, they might not be thinking about sticking to one side of the channel because it's low tide. Cape 506, we're underway. We're about 200 yards from being on scene. Over. All right, let's get them off. Let's start pulling them on our boat. Get somebody to the bow, somebody to the stern. All right. From the initial call, when they said that, uh, that the people were, were hurt pretty bad, we didn't know exactly to what extent. Who's injured? We're going to come along. Yeah, we're, we're showing zero feet of water under us, so yeah. I think today was the lowest tide I had seen. Uh, it was a negative five feet or so. So we had lots of rocks showing at the bottom of the channel. Really, you could see a lot of it that you don't normally see. But on a normal tide, they probably wouldn't have run aground, so they really weren't expecting it. Is he going to be able to be moved? He can be moved. He is. We just verified that the uh, injured member would be able to move. Then we moved him to our boat, along with the other guy that uh, had hit his head. Are we going to take him on the bow? The man with the injured ribs was definitely, uh, you could tell, in some pain. We just wanted to get them off as soon as possible, as soon as they were able to move, because time does play a difference in something like this. And the quicker you can get them to a qualified you know, paramedic or uh, medical professional, the better. You heard your back? And my left ribs. The gentleman that sat down with the rib injuries, he seemed to be in a lot of pain whenever the boat would bounce a little bit. He actually had us slow the boat down when we started coming up on plane because he was in so much pain. What I was thinking when I was riding on the bow next to him was hoping that he basically wasn't just going to fall overboard. So we were just keeping an eye on him, making sure that uh, he was hanging on tight. And uh, as for the other gentleman who had a head injury, he said he was feeling a little better once we got him onto our boat. Two, three, two, five, five, six. I've got the two uh, injured crew members. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just coming out and uh, just making sure that these guys are able to keep going. I just want to get these two guys back as quick as possible. All right. Yeah, Roger that. We're on our way. We'll see what we can do. After we got the two uh, individuals on our boat, it was time to start thinking about, you know, towing the other boat back or making sure that they could get back under their own power. They're off the beach right now. They're making their way towards us. Roger that. All right, there's the boat. We're going to have the uh, vessel follow us to the station, dock at the transient pier, and then we're going to uh, conduct a, a post star. So they're, they're coming back to the dock with us. They're right behind us right now. We picked the two injured crew members up. We're taking them to the pier right now. Our EMTs are on scene, so we're just going to tie up real quick and uh, let the paramedics take care of these gentlemen. So what, what's the story? Uh, they ran ground. Ribs are hurt. The other gentleman in the hat uh, hit his head. What I'm most worried about is uh, possible internal bleeding about the Breath. As soon as we get this blood pressure, we'll get you moving, all right? What's that? The paramedics had him sit down and, and take his vitals. His lungs sounded good, so they weren't too worried about any internal problems. And he was able to walk off, you know, by himself. I knew it was hot, but I didn't think they needed to send the fire department. Well, yeah, we're going to hose you down here in a minute. It was really great to be able to help just people this time. We always kind of get wrapped up in towing a boat and and moving uh, equipment, but you don't always get that effect on, uh, on actually helping a person. So it was really good because we got to uh, possibly saving somebody's life today. We're ready to go out. You're ready to go out, but I don't think Emory's good to go, and the boat's not good to go. 
Yeah. Emery, you got a little more color than you had earlier. Feel a little better. Can I jump on you and whoop you now? Sure. <laughs> My name's Emery Ingham. I'm 57, and we're fishing on the Sun Seeker. I was standing in the, um, I think they call it the salon. And when the boat hit, I went flying down the stairs into the galley and, and uh, smacked my ribs against the corner of a bulkhead. And then my friend came tumbling down the stairs after me. You know, it's unfortunate that sealed it in. Yeah. That, we were dead center on that channel. Well, the channels change. According to the that other guy, guy Bill down here, he says, I can't tell you how many people have pulled off there this year. We were doing nothing wrong, we exactly where we're supposed to be. You know, it's always in the back of your mind that you're going over the Columbia River Bar, which is the most dangerous river bar in the world. When we hit that sandbar, all that comes forth and you don't know what the hell happened. The Coast Guard, they're a special breed. They put themselves in danger to help people like me. It was good to see them there. I knew I'd be okay.